Good morning, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with another post ER shift COVID update. Uh, I'm going to keep this short because, boy, I got just killed last night. I was very, very busy. Um, it's get, you know it's getting frustrating. I think I'm, I'm starting to hear from more of my colleagues and and more of our nurses and other staff members that it's it's really starting to kind of wear on people because we're you know we're seeing more and more cases and and we don't have room for a lot of these people and everything feels a little bit out of control and we keep seeing numbers going up and up and up and you know we're at, um, you know crossing the 2,000 patient mark in hospital in North Carolina and you know about at the beginning of the month it was like a thousand people so doubled in about a month and and we don't know what's going to happen in the coming months so um, we're seeing you know lots and lots of COVID in, in the hospital and you know this is the time of year that we see lots of other stuff too so the hospital is busy units are full ICUs are full uh, intermediate care units are full now it's not only COVID um, but this is the time of year that we start seeing other problems you know flu pneumonia um, a lot of chronic diseases for whatever reason get worse in the winter time and this is a busy time in the hospital in general and then you add in a big chunk of COVID cases and things quickly get out of control and we've talked about this and you know I've, I've seen some of the comments on YouTube in particular that basically you know poo poo the whole thing and say well you know it's only these sick people you know the underlying medical problem people have a problem and they're, they're the ones that really need to worry about it I think that you don't understand that there are lots and lots of people that have risk factors for this in in the country and you know we all play a, a role in this and somebody said I, you know we just have to open extra hospitals and mobile hospitals and we'll be fine well you know who's going to staff those hospitals you know the, the skill set to do what i do and to do what the critical care doctors do and the inpatient doctors do is not shared by every physician not every physician is trained in critical care um, so you can't just stick somebody who doesn't do this all the time in, in a hospital and, and you know we have a shortage of doctors in this country we have a critical shortage of nurses so uh, again you have to figure out how to staff these places and you know hopefully it won't come to that but um, it's it's something to be concerned about so things continue to get crazier and crazier in the emergency department and so that's my update from the, the night shifts I, I've done uh, here recently um, uh, for those of you just joining me my, my name is Jeffrey Galvin I'm a board certified emergency medicine doctor also a, a wellness physician outside of Charlotte uh, I've been doing updates since this started um, if you find this useful you want to know about more hit the little bell subscribe um, you'll get notifications of when I post. We also have a Facebook page that um, has lots of followers that I try to keep uh, information going there. Um, I thought I'd talk a little bit this morning about vaccines because we're, you know, we're, it's sort of the light at the end of the tunnel, right? We're, we're talking about, you know, come springtime, we're going to have vaccines. It sounds like there are going to be some vaccinations starting, you know, at some hospitals in the next couple of weeks. Um, people have asked me time and time again, would, you, would I get the first one? What do I think of, of the vaccines? Well, you know, there's many. Um, I thought I'd talk about the three biggest ones because there are three that have come out of phase three trials so far. There's one from Pfizer um, and uh, BioNTech. It's a combination. There's one from Moderna and there's one from, uh, uh, what is the other one? AstraZeneca. Uh, two of them, the Moderna and the Pfizer ones, are similar vaccines, and they're very, very clever vaccines that we haven't really had the technology before to really make effectively, and they're what are called messenger RNA vaccines. And so if you imagine your DNA is like a cookbook, okay, and what happens normally is that if the body needs to make um, chocolate chip cookies, then that a signal is given to the DNA, and essentially DNA being the cookbook opens to the page that has the recipe for chocolate chip cookies. Then what's called messenger RNA comes and goes up against the page and it copies the recipe. And then that recipe gets transported out of the nucleus of the cell into the little protein building factories that live in the cytoplasm of the cell. And it hands that instruction to the cook that's in this little factory and they make a chocolate chip cookie. And you know, those are typically proteins that are used for all different kinds of things. So what Moderna and Pfizer have both done is they've made a vaccine that is just 
this little messenger RNA, just the, just the instructions to the cook. So it doesn't ever go near the DNA, it can't affect the DNA. It goes out and it codes for this viral spike protein, the, the protein that the virus makes to stick to cells. It just makes that, the whole virus, just that cell, or just that spike protein rather, and then the cell starts, you know, because it's got this recipe, the little factory starts churning out these copies. It's a foreign material. And so the body sees that and says, oh, that's that's an alien presence. Let's make antibodies against it, destroy it. And then you, you become immune. And, you know, both of those virus, both of those vaccines, rather, that use very similar technology, Moderna and the uh, Pfizer one, are showing very, very high efficacy, meaning that they're 94, 95% effective. And that means that they gave those vaccines to about 30 to 40,000 people. Half of them got the vaccine, half of them got a placebo, the investigators and the patients didn't know who was who. And then they followed those people along. And when a certain critical number of them had developed, had actually caught COVID, then they, they unblinded the data and they said, okay, who got the vaccine, who didn't? And what they found was that, you know, of the 160, 170 um, people that came down with coronavirus, 94, 95% of them were in the placebo, the unimmunized group, and only a tiny percentage were immunized, meaning that the immunization works. Interestingly, um, in the, in the uh, Moderna, I believe the Moderna uh, trial as well, what they also found was that there were 30 cases of severe COVID. Those are the ones we worry about, the people that need to go into hospital that may end up dying. And of those 30 people that got severe COVID, they were all in the placebo group, meaning none of the people that got immunized developed severe COVID. So that's even better news. The nice thing about these RNA vaccines is that they're, once you make them, all you need to do is change the instructions. So the next pandemic that comes along, the next viral disease, once you have the sequence of the virus, you can make it very, very quickly. So it's, it's exciting technology. The side effects have been pretty few and far between the things you typically would see with a vaccine, sort of fever, body aches in some people as the body mounts this immune response, not to the vaccine itself, but to the proteins that the vaccine is telling the cell to make. Um, the other uh, vaccine made by AstraZeneca is what's called a vector vaccine, and it uses um, essentially like a cold virus that can infect humans to inject the DNA for the spike protein into the cell. And that's more of a traditional model. Now, um, people looked at the, the, uh, the AstraZeneca data and they gave two different... Um, they gave two different um, uh, numbers. One was 60% effective and one was 90% effective. And what happened was during that trial, they made a mistake. Um, and they gave a bunch of people a half dose of the vaccine, not the full dose by accident. And they discovered that accident um, in the midst of the study and they decided to continue doing it. And guess what they found? They found that the people who got the full dose all these vaccines are two shots, right? They're about a month apart. The people who got the full dose, it was about 60% effective. Um, and, uh, and so the people that got the half dose first and then the full dose, it was 90% effective. So actually the mistake was, was beneficial because getting a lower dose first seems to be more effective. So the, I think they averaged the two of them together to be 70%. I don't think you can really do that. I, don't, I, don't, I think people have issue with that data collection. Um, but it does look like if you get the half dose and then the full dose, it's 90%. So we've got three good vaccine candidates. Now, um, I really am waiting to get that safety data looked at by, by third parties. Um, the preliminary stuff is pretty, you know, pretty hopeful. Um, I, I need more data. I want to really be able to look at this stuff myself because I'm going to be in that group of people that are going to probably be forced to get it right away because I work in an emergency department and we're at a high risk um, uh, group. And I, I don't want to take a vaccine that's not safe. So I, I really want them to meet that standard where we can look at that data. But I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic and um, it may well be that if these things prove to be safe and effective as they look like they are at first blush, then we may be able to roll it out to the rest of the country by the springtime. And we could be through this thing if people actually decide to get immunized you know, by the summertime. And that's great news. Doesn't change the fact that we're looking at a very rough three to four months. Um, and I think we'll see that play out. My prediction, we'll see 300,000 cases a day coming up soon. 
Um, and I think you'll see deaths start going up and other things because remember admissions and deaths lag those diagnosed cases by, by weeks to months. Um, I'm tired. It's been a long couple nights. Um, I'm going to go home and go to bed. Please uh, do what I always say. Wash your hands, wear your mask, socially distance, look out for those around you. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. Um, take care of those people around you. Look out. Be a good citizen. I'll be back with more stuff for you soon. Good night.